welcome to the 18th annual Martin Luther King Jr. Freedom Breakfast and President's Fulfilling the Dream Awards program. I'm Michelle Garfield Cook, Vice Provost for Institutional Diversity here at the University of Georgia. Normally, we would gather in person to celebrate the life and legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. While this year's program is virtual, our theme is no less important. The power of the dream, forging a path forward, truly speaks to these unprecedented times. As the university in athens Clark County continue combating and recovering from the effects of COVID-19, we're also actively working to build a more diverse and inclusive culture on our campus and in our community. Together, we forge this new path forward. This year's keynote speaker knows very well what it means to work towards a more equitable future. Hamilton Holmes Jr. is a business development director for Piper O'Brien Hare Architects in Alpharetta and the son of Hamilton Holmes Sr., one of the first black students to integrate the University of Georgia in 1961, along with Charlene Hunter Gall. As we reflect on the life and legacy of Dr. King, we contemplate his profound vision of a better future, not only one that presented equal and inclusive opportunities for all citizens, but also one that would take commitment and perseverance to achieve. This vision resonated 60 years ago and still resonates today. As Dr. King once said, every step toward the goal of justice requires sacrifice, suffering, and struggle. The tireless exertions and passionate concern of dedicated individuals. That is what brings us together and the purpose of this program, recognizing Dr. King's unyielding attitude and legacy through the invaluable work of individuals and their contributions to civil rights and racial justice. Our hope is that this program inspires conversation and connections that not only support our community, but also our humanity. So thank you for participating today as we commemorate the progress we've made toward realizing Dr. King's dream. Thank you for your role promoting the basic truth that each person, no matter their race, background or ability, has a right to the same respect, justice and freedoms as their neighbor. Enjoy the program. Lift every voice and sing till earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound. has brought us facing the Good morning, and welcome to this year's Martin Luther King Jr. Freedom Breakfast. We come together to celebrate a true giant, one of the world's most influential leaders, a champion for justice and equality, and a man whose life and legacy continue to inspire us all. It is truly a pleasure to be a part of this very special event that honors such a great leader. Though we are not in our traditional setting, filling the Grand Hall of the Tate Student Center, we remain unwavering in our commitment to honor the legacy of Dr. King. On January 9th, we kicked off our celebration of the 60th anniversary of desegregation. On that day, in 1961, Hamilton Holmes, and Charlene Hunter Galt forever changed the University of Georgia for the better. Today, we are joined by members of the Holmes family, one of whom will serve as our keynote speaker today. Mr. Hamilton Holmes, Jr., 
a UGA alumnus and the son of one of our most iconic alumni, Dr. Hamilton E. Holmes, is here to provide greetings for today's event. Hamilton, I appreciate your willingness to take part in this celebration. You continue to find meaningful ways to give back to UGA, and we appreciate it. We look forward to your remarks this morning. Allow me to also extend my gratitude to our local partners, the Clark County School District and the athens Clark County government. I appreciate your ongoing support of this important annual event that is a great example of community partnership. Before I close, I would also like to extend a special thank you to Dr. Michelle Cook, who leads our campus efforts for diversity and inclusion. Dr. Cook and her hardworking team do so much to make this celebration a great success every year. Finally, I want to thank all of you for joining us and making this celebration one that honors not only Dr. King, but the collective work towards becoming the nation that he dreamed we would be. Stay safe, and I hope you enjoy today's program. Good morning. I'm athens Clark County Mayor Kelly Gertz. And on behalf of the entire unified government of athens Clark County, I'm glad to welcome you to the Martin Luther King Jr. Weekend as we celebrate his legacy of justice and opportunity for all. This is obviously a very different version of this event that we're experiencing together here this January, given the pandemic that we are supporting each other through. But what's resonant to me is that it is ever more important that we do support each other from the ground up for true justice and true opportunity for everyone in this community across Georgia and across the nation. God bless you and have a wonderful day. Hello, my name is Sernona Thomas, and I have the privilege of serving as the Clark County School District Superintendent. I'm excited today to share with you this year's showcase of student winners in our annual contest celebrating the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Each year, our students create art and literature centered on an important theme and message from the works of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. This year, we asked students to answer this question. How can I help achieve Martin Luther King Jr.'s dream of equality and freedom for all? While this can seem like an impossible task for any one individual, we all do have the power to help change our world, one courageous act at a time. One of Dr. King's many famous quotes says, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter. Our amazing students have broken the silence. They have used their brilliance, creativity, arts, and language skills to end the silence about freedom and equality. During this last year, we have faced countless negative incidents that have demanded our attention. If we are not careful, we can become jaded by all that is not well within our country and world. Yet today, I greet you with hope and with optimism. The work you see serves as a resounding reminder of the potential for change that resides within our youth and the individual and collective power of their voices. We salute their efforts and their messages of hope, promise, and strength. Good morning. My name is Alton Standifer, and I have the pleasure of introducing the recipients of the 2021 President's Fulfilling the Dream Award. 
The President's Fulfilling the Dream Award highlights the work of UGA faculty, staff, students, and local community members who have made significant contributions to justice, race relations, and human rights. Our award winners have demonstrated a commitment to the athens Clark County community, the Clark County School District, and the University of Georgia through their civic engagement by utilizing King's philosophy to resolve conflict and foster goodwill. Our first award is presented to Ms. Ashley Love. A native of Columbus, Ohio, Ashley is a doctoral candidate in the Educational Theory and Practice Program in the Mary Frances Early College of Education. Love holds degrees from Ohio University and The Ohio State University. During her time at UGA, Ashley has served as a general member, committee chair, president, and vice president of the graduate and professional scholars. Last year, Ashley served as the project manager for the Mary Frances Early Lecture and Luncheon. Ashley, I want to thank you for your unwavering service to the graduate student community. Your leadership in challenging times has had a tremendous impact on our campus and your peers. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Ms. Ashley Love. Fulfilling the dream is sowing seeds, watering them, and knowing that something beautiful is on the horizons. Fulfilling the dream is being an empathetic, heartful, and faithful leader. Dr. Martin Luther King inspired me to fulfill the dream by being a tireless, dignified leader, and I've tried to do that during my time here at the University of Georgia. The legacies of Dr. Martin Luther King, as well as Ms. Mary Frances Early, have guided my path to leading graduate students of color here on campus and encouraging and sustaining a community. I've enjoyed working with students all across campus, faculty and staff, and have built many wonderful and lasting relationships. I hope that I've honored the legacies of Dr. Martin Luther King, Ms. Mary Frances Early, Hunter and Holmes, and every other trailblazer that's come before me. And I'm so grateful for this opportunity. Next, we have Mr. Narky Norton. Narkey serves as the Assistant Director of Recruitment in the Graduate School's Office of Recruitment and Diversity Initiatives. Narkey holds degrees in Political Science and Higher Education Administration. He is currently pursuing his PhD in College Student Affairs Administration from the Mary Frances Early College of Education here at the University of Georgia. Narkey, you continue to be a prominent figure in our university community. The lives that you have touched here will impact the world for generations to come. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Mr. Narky Norton. One day when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours. That song from the film Selma speaks to unfulfilled prophecy given by Dr. King when he gave his I Have a Dream speech nearly 60 years ago. Let me share my dream with you. I have a dream that one day the beloved community will fulfill Dr. King's dream completely because we must live fully and freely without fear because we matter, period. Our dream must be greater and bigger than before that even Dr. King himself would be surprised. So join me in doing this work to fulfill King's dream and formulate our future for the next 60 years. Jalen Polk is a fourth year economics major from Lithonia, Georgia. He is a student that I've been honored to work with in a number of capacities here on campus. Most recently, during his tenure as the president of the Black Male Leadership Society. In this, his senior year, he is committed to the mission of this organization, fostering a sense of unity, strength, and love, and has done so while navigating the challenges of the global health pandemic that we are facing. Jalen plans to continue his education by pursuing a master's degree after graduation. 
Jalen, there's a lot that is to be admired about you. Not only your amazing golf game, but also your intentionality, thoughtfulness, and sincere care for others around you. Our future is bright knowing that we will have leaders like you lighting the path ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in congratulating Mr. Jalen Polk. Dr. King was once asked, Pastor, how do you know where to start? He responded, I only struggle with figuring out where to end. Dr. King is somebody who we revere as one of the greats in our society. Why? He responded to his sensitivities. And Dr. King himself said that anybody can be great because anybody can serve. One of the greatest lessons of leadership that I witnessed a year ago was at a youth leadership camp. And the leader of that camp spoke up at 1 a.m. to respond to his sensitivities. That action allowed 15 to 20 young men, black men, to open up and share tears around the fears that they have as they transition to college and high school and personal identity shifts. I took away three lessons from analyzing Dr. King and that lesson. One, in our day and age, sensitivity sometimes has a blanket statement and encompasses unfortunate and burdensome emotions. But sensitivity is the core of our human nature and it allows for us to have the passions and the ambitions and the character that we wanna build. Two, when we speak out for our sensitivities, we empower those who follow us. Always remember that we are leading somebody and somebody's watching after us every second of every day. Third, when we speak up, we are serving because we are introducing a new perspective to our society. Therefore, anybody can be great because anybody can be themselves. Our community awardee was born and raised in Athens and has spent his entire life here. Throughout this time, he has committed much of his life to public service and uplifting the citizens of athens Clark County. He has and continues to serve on a number of local boards for organizations that are having a significant impact here in our community. For 15 years, he served on the board of directors for the Athens Housing Authority, seven of those as chairman. He's a member of the Athens Rotary Club, the Classic City Golf Association, and a life member of the NAACP. He attended the University of Georgia and also served in the U.S. Army prior to a successful 35-year career at the Georgia Department of Labor. After being licensed and ordained by the Hill Chapel Baptist Church in 1993, he has continued to serve as a minister in our community. He's currently an associate minister at Hill Chapel and serves as the pastor of White Rock Baptist Church. Our community awardee is Pastor Charlie Maddox. Pastor Maddox, thank you for your example of what it means to be a true public servant. Your commitment to this community is unmatched and you continue to serve as a role model for the next generation of leaders. I personally appreciate the kind words, honesty, and wisdom that you share anytime I see you. Be it in a parking lot on Alps Road or doing, during fellowship after a church service, People often leave your presence knowing more and equipped to do more than when they arrived. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Mr. Charlie Maddox. I want to thank the University of Georgia and Dr. Moorhead for selecting me to receive Fulfilling the Dream. It is an honor to look at this and see how far we've come here in Athens and at the University of Georgia. On that dreadful day in April in 1968, I was crossing the street of Lumpkin Street, a student here, when I got the dreadful news. But now I see the dream is still alive, and because of that, that has given people like myself and others the opportunity to be a part of the dream and fulfill Dr. King's dream. Next, we have Dr. Tony Lowe. Dr. Lowe is an associate professor in the School of Social Work. His work focuses on events in a West Georgia community that were the impetus for starting the National Afro Council in 1898, the forerunner for what we know today as the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. 
Dr. Lowe was recognized by Georgia Trend Magazine with his Visionary Cities Award presented at the annual conference of the Georgia Municipal Association. Dr. Lowe, your work has been an example of ways to bring communities together. I know that the city of Hogansville appreciated your work, and so do we here at the University of Georgia. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in congratulating Dr. Tony Lowe. Aspirational values embedded in our nation's most, most, most sacred document helped give rise to Dr. King's dream that challenged us all to live up to the principles of racial equality, human rights, and social justice. But to do this, we must first come to grips with our difficult past, accept responsibility for our troubling presence, and aspire and plan for a better future. In some ways, my partnering with the city of Hogansville addressed these elements by using three central pillars of the university, research, teaching, and service. My community research project chronicled the city's embattled African-American postmaster, Isaiah Lofton, who was the victim of an attempted assassination in 1897. This project has three outcomes. First, it required local leaders to confront and recognize the city's difficult past in race relations. Secondly, my effort paralleled the creation of the countywide forum for civic leadership leaders willing to work on building racial trust. And finally, the city has now proposed creating a permanent memorial park honoring the civil rights legacy at the site of the Georgia Historical Society's newest Civil Rights Trail marker in West Georgia. So in closing, I want to thank the city of Hoganville for their willingness to work with me on this project and future efforts, and the University of Georgia for recognizing my work as helping to fulfill the dream of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr. Good morning. My name is Camille Jones, and I am a third year biology and Spanish double major from Lithonia, Georgia. Today, I have the distinct honor to introduce Mr. Hamilton Holmes Jr. as our esteemed speaker for this year's Martin Luther King Jr. Freedom Breakfast. Mr. Hamilton Holmes Jr. earned his BBA in marketing from the Terry College of Business in 1990 and later earned an MBA in marketing from Mercer University in 2000. He currently serves as the Business Development Director for Piper O'Brien Air Architects in Alpharetta, where he builds partnerships with individuals, companies, and various entities who need architectural design services. He is also President and CEO of the Alfred Tupp Holmes Legacy Foundation and board member of the Starbase Foundation. Mr. Hamilton Holmes Jr.'s father Dr. Hamilton E. Holmes Sr., along with Ms. Charlene hunter Galt, were the first African-American students to enroll at UGA. The Hunter Holmes Academic Building, where the Office of Institutional Diversity is housed, is named in their honor. Mr. Holmes Jr. and his wife, Gail, who earned her BBA in 1992, are also supporters of UGA's 1961 Club a special group of donors named for the year of desegregation at UGA, who share a passion for ensuring undergraduate student success. This year, 2021, marks 60 years of desegregation at the University of Georgia. And we owe a great deal of thanks and gratitude to pioneers such as Dr. Hamilton E. Holmes Sr. for trailblazing a path for students of underrepresented backgrounds, as well as very influential UGA community members like Mr. Hamilton Holmes Jr., who have preserved and built upon his father's legacy. Without further ado, I am very pleased to introduce our honored community member, fellow Bulldog and speaker, Hamilton Holmes Jr. Before I begin, let me first thank Dr. Michelle Cook, UGA's Vice Provost for Diversity and Inclusion and Strategic University Initiatives for inviting me to speak. Let me also thank UGA President Jerry Moorhead, who has worked tirelessly to make UGA a more diverse and inclusive environment. I'd also like to thank the event committee, which includes residents of athens Clark County and the Clark County School District. I am honored that the committee invited me to deliver the keynote address for the 2021 18th annual Martin Luther King Jr. Freedom Breakfast. This year's theme is Power of the Dream, Forging a Path Forward. Dreams are stories and images that our minds create while we sleep. They can be entertaining, fun, 
romantic, frightening, and sometimes even bizarre. They are an enduring source of mystery for scientists and psychologists. Why do dreams occur? What causes them? Can we control them? What do they mean? The question of why we dream has fascinated philosophers and scientists for thousands of years. Some of the more prominent dream theories contend that the function of dreaming is to consolidate memories, process emotions, express our deepest desires, and gain practice confronting potential dangers. My father, Dr. Hamilton Holmes, and his high school classmate, Charlene Hunter, had a dream of attending UGA upon their graduation from high school in 1959. As we know, they were not immediately accepted, but after they won their court case, they went all the way to the US Supreme Court. They were finally admitted as students in January 1961. In January of 2021, we celebrate the 60th anniversary of the integration of the University of Georgia. Because of their courage and pursuit of their dreams of education, my father and Charlene opened doors for all students to attend UGA regardless of their race. The university has become a place where all students now have the opportunity to learn and thrive. Martin Luther King Jr. had a dream and he shared it with us during his I Have a Dream speech, which was delivered on August 28, 1963 at the March on Washington. Dr. King delivered the 17 minute speech 57 years ago and it still remains one of the most famous speeches in history. Weaving in references to the country's founding fathers and the Bible, King used universal themes to depict the struggles of African Americans. Widely held as a masterpiece of rhetoric, King's speech invoked pivotal documents in American history, including the Declaration of Independence, the Emancipation Proclamation, and the United States Constitution. King had been preaching about dreams since 1960 when he gave a speech to the NAACP called The Negro and the American Dream. During the I Have a Dream speech, he called for civil and economic rights and an end to racism in the United States. More than 250,000 civil rights supporters of all races gathered on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial and the surrounding grounds in Washington, D.C. The speech was a defining moment of the civil rights movement and the most iconic speeches in American history. His speech continues even today to be recognized as one of the signature moments of the civil rights movement. The March on Washington for Jobs and Freedom was partly intended to demonstrate mass support for the civil rights legislation proposed by President John F. Kennedy in June of 1963. Martin Luther King and other leaders therefore agreed to keep their speeches calm to avoid any provoking conflicts. Among the most quoted lines of the speech are, I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they would not be judged by the color of their skin but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. We recently celebrated the life and legacy of US Representative John Lewis, who also spoke that day as the president of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee. He said that, quote, Dr. King had the power, the ability, and the capacity to transform those steps on the Lincoln Memorial into a monumental area that will forever be recognized. By speaking the way he did, he educated, he inspired, he informed not just the people there, but people throughout America and unborn generations. If you read the speech, it's hard not to be in awe, like those who stood and heard King then, by the greatness and truth of his words. He captured our country's challenges and what needed to be done to fix the challenges. The I Have a Dream speech was a vision of what Dr. King wanted America to be, what America can be. The speech was lauded in the days after the event and was widely considered the high point of the March on Washington. An article in the Boston Globe by journalist Mary McGrory shortly after the march reported that King's speech caught the mood and moved the crowd of the day as no other speaker in the event. The speech was a success for the President John F. Kennedy administration and for the Civil Rights Coalition that had planned it. Not one arrest relating to the demonstration occurred. Kennedy had watched King's speech on television and had been very impressed. Afterwards, March leaders accepted an invitation to the White House to meet with President Kennedy. Kennedy felt the march bolstered the chances for his civil rights bill. King tirelessly worked for equal rights for all as guaranteed in the US Constitution, and in 1964, at age 35, became the youngest recipient 
of the Nobel Peace Prize. He was recognized for his nonviolent campaign against racism and his insistence that everyone in the United States be judged by their personal qualities rather than their skin color. Four years later, on April 4, 1968, King was in Memphis supporting a boycott for sanitation workers when, while standing on his motel room balcony, he was shot and killed. On that date, 1968, many feared the dream might die. In his honor, 15 years later, King's birthday was approved as a federal holiday in 1983. He is the only non-president to have a national holiday dedicated in his honor and is the only non-president memorialized on the Great Mall in the nation's capital. And because timeless truth is what made that speech great, it is still relevant to today's challenges. His speech was not one of a political activist. It was more of a sermon of a pastor encouraging us to fix what was broken in America and lead us all to a better world. King did not lead a revolution. He led a national wake-up call. The March on Washington and King's speech are widely considered turning points in the civil rights movement, shifting the demand and demonstrations for racial equality that had mostly incurred in the South to a national stage. Martin Luther King Jr. was not just speaking to African Americans in that speech, but to all Americans, because he understood that the country would more easily rise together if it worked together. I Have a Dream remains relevant today because for as many strides that have been made, we're still dealing with inequality in the United States. Martin Luther King's Jr. agenda included providing equal access, not only for education, but for health care, housing, and social programs. To fulfill the dream requires a commitment to believing that our differences are the very source of our innovation and enlightenment. It requires a commitment to providing all of our citizens with a safe and inclusive environment needed to thrive in this world. We can get there together as a nation if we take action and deliver economic empowerment to help achieve equality and equity. In honor of the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, we're here to celebrate the legacy that he left behind. Not only was Dr. King a civil rights activist, but he is also remembered for the powerful legacy of peace, nonviolence, and love that he left behind. Although his life was short and only lasted 39 years, he lived a full life and his accomplishments are numerous. Just a few include, he provided leadership in the 1955 Montgomery bus boycott. He was instrumental in establishing the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in 1957, which is a civil rights organization that supports the philosophy of nonviolence. He delivered the I Have a Dream speech in 1963. He was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize in 1964. He was an advocate for nonviolent protests in the Memphis sanitation worker strike of 1968. Notable legislation achieved during his life included the Civil Rights Act of 1964, which banned discrimination in employment and public accommodations based on race, color, religion, or national origin. He was also instrumental in helping to get the Voting Rights Act of 1965 passed. This act restored and protected the right to vote. And also, he was involved with the Fair Housing Act of 1968. This banned housing discrimination in both sales or rentals. No one person has all of the answers to overcome our challenges, but we have hope. And I believe in the saying that as people, we have more in common than that which divides us. When the storms come, they eventually end, and the sun will shine again. So be hopeful. As we celebrate the life and legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, Jr., I challenge each of you to turn the page from 2020, which is undoubtedly one of the most challenging years in our nation's history for many reasons. Turn the page and make your own history starting today. Take care of yourself, look out for your family, and make a difference in the lives of others around you. Please do something special with your life. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for this year's virtual Martin Luther King Jr. Freedom Breakfast. On behalf of the Planning Committee and our sponsors, we thank Hamilton Holmes Jr. for delivering the 2021 Freedom Breakfast keynote address. And a heartfelt congratulations to this year's Fulfilling the Dream Award winners. As we spend today reflecting on the importance and meaning of forging a path forward, we are wise to remember these words from Dr. King. Human progress is neither automatic nor inevitable. While we celebrate the diversity of our community, 
We also must recognize the dedication and sacrifice of individuals like Dr. King, Hamilton Holmes Jr., and our award winners as we continue working to build a more just and equitable society. So let us be inspired by the commitment our award winners and speakers share with Dr. King in making our community more equal and inclusive. And let us learn from them and from each other. That is how we forge a path forward and continue shaping the world that Dr. King envisioned for us all. I wish you all good health during this unique and difficult time. And I hope that next year we'll be able to gather again to celebrate another inspiring and phenomenal Freedom Breakfast. Until then, thank you for joining us and have a great day.